Hello, my name is Thompson. This is Sean Clark for Red Wolf. <coughs> Back again today for a third video. And this time, I'm doing it on some uh, one of my favorite bushcraft tools. It's made by Condor in El Salvador. Um, it's a, called the Engineer Bolt. Now, this is my answer to having to worry about breaking your knife while batoning wood. This is about 3.5. Uh, five pounds, just about 3.8 pounds, it's a little over 3.5 pounds, I weighed it. My particular model was made very thick. This spine is just a little over an inch and a half thick about on this one. I don't know why, but they made it thicker. It's ground with a convex edge, so it's very strong. Stronger even than a flat grind. So if you were to miss and hit the ground, you're not going to dent your blade as easy. It's a 1095 high carbon steel. <clears throat> Sorry, 1085 high carbon steel. And it's got a hammered finish. I coated it with mineral oil, which helps keep off corrosion, as it is a high carbon steel. And where I live, it's usually either wet or very snowy all year round. So that's nice. And it's got a very nice hardwood handle. It's full tank, all the way through the bottom, and has three very sturdy and beefy large brass pins. It also has a brass hole with a brass uh, ring through there, and I put my own paracord lanyard on there. Help keep a better grip when chopping and your hand gets fatigued. You could wrap around however you want. Also, it makes it very easy and nice to hang. When you're done with it. Um, this one has a nice curving blade, much like a, I guess you could say, a very beefy Bowie knife with a scimitar curved to it. Now the reason that is, there's three types of cuts. A straight blade does a push cut, where it punches with the full surface in, and that spreads the surface out, making it more difficult which is why straight swords are more difficult to chop with than a curved sword like a katana or a scimitar. Uh, this is a chopping cut because the center of the blade hits first, which is a smaller pounds per square inch, starting the bite into the wood before it chops all the way in. I've seen different chop tests into deadfall and fresh wood on Pinterest, and this one seems to chop deeper than any machete on the market. Um, a few other YouTubers out there have done videos on it, but uh, the one thing I like that some of them might not have touched on as much as I am going to is uh, shopping wood. Um, this is very easy to do with if you want to. Also, if you want to save the edge and just hit through some deadfall, because we're up north in the northern forests of Saskatchewan. tree line. Now that it's a boreal forest, which is it means it's an ancient forest, which means you're going to run into a lot of trees that are fallen that are dead. They are not fresh and uh, a sharp edge is not necessary to break through them. So if you're out in a survival situation up north where there is a lot of deadfall and boreal ancient forest, you might want to save your edge for important tasks and just use the back edge. Because it is curved, it's going to do like a hook cut, like a scythe like a sickle and chop through deadfall, making it a lot easier to get through a path without having to damage or dull your edge. Saves time sharpening and saves your edge. Um, so this is a tool that could be used either this way. You can strike with it like that and it's going to break stuff without damaging the edge or using a chopping edge. This part here, it's a dedicated chopper. For smaller tasks, you can use your hand in the curve to push, to whittle, feather wood. Uh, some guys like to do spoons with wood for firewood and whatnot. Um, depends what you want to do. Uh, you could, if you had to, um, strike a flint on the sharp back edge to make a fire because it is such a high carbon steel. You've got a lot of edge area you could use to strike 
on the sharp part of the edge with the flints and start a fire. I always carry a magnesium rod and ferrule for fire starting with me. This part here is very nice. You can whittle off little shavings of magnesium ferrule. I make a nice spark for a fire. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere, one of the things I learned in Scouts is being prepared. High carbon steel blade and a nice flint and ferrule. There you go. You got yourself a good fire going. And as you can see, no charring or burn marks in the back of the blade. Good quality seal that's oiled should do that. So, one thing I like about it too is it comes sorry about that, with a very nice leather sheath. It's very thick, welted leather. It's got uh, nice snaps. It's a two snap piece. One thing about it is nice is if you want to keep this open here, you can still draw the whole blade without it falling out while you have it swinging off your belt. This actually swings, so as you're walking, it's going to not be stuck to you. If you wanted to, you could tie a pair of cords so that it moves with your leg while you're walking and it's not slapping against your leg the whole time. Um, you could even just tuck it into your belt. Like that, get out of the way, nothing to get your legs. And if you need to for quick deployment, there it is. There you go. So, Condor makes very good machetes, very good warranty, very good quality. This one I got on sale for about $50. They range anywhere from $80 to $100 Canadian or US, depending on the dollar at the time. Uh, there, you can usually get them on sale online or from a local retailer, but very good quality, very good practical uh, tool for the bush, hunting, camping, anything like that. Good survival tool. It's a little bit more substantial than a small carrying knife. Um, if you wanted to, you could use it as a rocker, chop food at the camp, whatnot. But all around, I, I've actually been able to throw this as well. A lot of fun if you get bored out there too. So, Condor, Engineer, Bolo Machete. Uh, Mrs. Red Wolf, thank you very much. And have yourself a good day.